Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webcast, where we'll be discussing automating self-service with data lakes. My name is Sarah Deal, and I'm a business intelligence and analytics consultant with Thoroughgood, based out of Philadelphia, PI. I'm joined today by my colleague, Laura Colstad. In terms of an agenda today, I'll take you through a quick introduction to Thoroughgood, and then we'll discuss data lakes, self-service, and automation, and then we'll hand it over to Laura, who will take you through a demo. So just a quick background about Thoroughgood and who we are. We're an independent and specialist business intelligence and analytics consultancy. We're a global firm and have offices in London, Philadelphia, Boston, Singapore, Sao Paulo, and Bangalore. We help our customers with strategies, solutions, and a range of services in the BI and analytics space. From BI strategy and roadmaps, architectural requirements and design, solution design, end-to-end -end implementation, and data services and support for production applications. We also support our customers in user training and empowerment programs, which we're seeing a lot of these days, particularly with organizations looking to adopt the self-service culture. Our clients typically span four data-rich verticals, consumer goods and manufacturing, pharmaceutical and health services, banking, and insurance. Our clients are some of the leading organizations in these sectors, and we take a lot of pride in the long-standing relationships we have fostered with some of the names you'll see here. We are an independent company in that we aren't aligned with one signal technology vendor. We work with most of the big players in the market and have strong partnerships with many of them, including Microsoft, Tableau, Databricks, and AWS. So before we get into the more detailed information about automating self-service for data lakes, I wanted to kind of start from the beginning here and explain why we're talking about it and why it might be useful. So if you're unfamiliar with data lakes, a data lake is a centralized repository that allows for storage of structured and unstructured data at any scale. You can store any amount of data in its current form without having to do any type of structuring for it. This allows for different types of analytics, such as mach machine learning, real-time analytics, dashboards, and visualizations. Data lakes also provide the opportunity for advanced security and protection to data at any scale. The general structure of a data lake enables easy access and for users to analyze data in different ways, leading to better and faster decision-making for the business. Using data lakes and a cloud platforms present an opportunity for self-service to enable users to be able to get the most out of their platforms and to satisfy their data and analytics needs. When thinking about self-service, most people relate the term to visualizations, modeling, or data analysis tools, but it's also applicable to data platforms as well. Self-service is a widely used term, but with data platforms, the point of self-service is to use strategy, technologies, and implementation patterns, but users in a position where they can read access data and work with it in the ways that they would like to. Allowing for self-service, particularly with data platforms, such as a data lake, provides benefits to users and business alike. Dependencies and bottlenecks on IT to produce data solutions can be reduced, allowing people in other roles to have the opportunity to work with data. This also gives users access to critical and reliable information and allows them to work with it at their leisure and generate their own analysis and reports. A common challenge we see across different organizations is how to get to this place of self-service. There are many considerations for this, but a key one is to ensure that your data lake is well-constructed, managed, and governed appropriately. There are important things to consider when you're creating, designing, and managing a self-service platform. While these considerations apply to data lakes, the underlying principles are applicable in other realms as well, such as reporting and analytics platforms. The first thing to consider is, who are the users that you're expecting to engage with the platform and what are their needs? For example, data analysts wanting process and enrich data, data scientists looking to work with raw data, or just users wishing to connect a recording tool directly to a data lake. Perhaps there's a need to augment existing data sets in the data lake with additional data sources. If so, how would you easily enable this pattern? Next, to do anything meaningful, you'll need data. Not all data sets may be available for users, so how do you add more data for the purpose of self-service needs and not disrupt the rest of the landscape? It won't take long before there's a wide range of data sets in the lake, and when this happens, how do you easily find the data set you're looking for? Utilizing things such as catalogs and tagging will allow users to quickly be able to access the data they need. There will also be a need for agility and experimentation scenarios. Providing tools that accelerate adoption, more automation, and low-code or no-code options make these access patterns more user-friendly. A key balance to strike is to create a platform that lowers barriers to adoption. Building in too many approvals and controls can deter people from working with the platform. Having said that, you need to build in just enough control so that as platform owners, you know what's going on and you can guarantee responsible and secure usage. For example, creating a separate path or area for sandbox or experimentation use cases. It is important to integrate sufficient auditing and monitoring in order to understand things such as adoption patterns and how effectively and extensively the platform is being used. This also benefits the platform owners by allowing them to understand how the platform is being used and make adjustments as needed. Another thing to consider is your community, which has two aspects to it. Consumers and users are one, and a support and operations team is the other. It is important to build and foster a community that is engaged to adopt self-service offerings, continuously learn, and help others in the community. It is useful to enable collaboration forms 
and also a support and operations team to drive support during the initial ramp up phase. The final thing to consider is your path to productionization. As you're designing the self-service platform, it is also worth thinking about the path to productionization looks like. How can experiments and POCs be ported over to the managed path and operationalized? Yes, more governance and review or quality assurance will be required, but building in processes and patterns will make users aware of the next steps just beyond the initial phase. Success in self-service and data lakes can look different from case to case, but the overarching goal is to define a self-service ecosystem that amplifies the investments in data and technology by empowering end users to discover valuable insights within a responsible framework. There are many ways to quantify success, but here are a few key components that are crucial to measure against to gauge the overall success and adoption of your platform. First is access. You want key business users to understand, trust, and have easy access to data that is relevant to their role. Next, we have use and sharing. Use of the data is key here, allowing those accessing it to make a difference through effectively using the data and platform and sharing their findings and successes throughout the community. For engagement, you want users to be engaged with the initiative such that they are champions for the solution and are actively identifying refinements and improvements to the platform. Visibility. More users are requesting access and engaging with the platform, which comes naturally along with use, sharing, and engagement as more people are championing and sharing their success with it. Evolution. So ideally, business-initiated solutions are evolving through the stages into being fully productionized. Last, we have governance. Governance is crucial to the, the success of the platform, often something that organizations do not put enough emphasis on. Ideally, you will have various controls in place to manage an effective BI and analytics platform that applies to both technology and humans as well. Understanding each of these key points and incorporating them into the overall vision for a self-service platform will be crucial in its overall success, user trust, and adoption. Developing a system that allows for self-service that is agile is often hard to achieve while also ensuring that your data lake is fully governed. Adding in automation wherever possible with respect to your data lake can, be a combina can make this combination of agility and self-service much more tangible and can result in a variety of benefits for your system. With automation, comes the benefit of improved performance with regards to data ingestion. This can be accomplished through means such as change data capture, which is the loading of incremental changes only within a data set rather than a complete reload. Within that, there is a possibility as well to automatically identify source schema changes, which can allow you to avoid ingestion pipelines breaking when schema changes are detected. In order to accomplish this, some analysis must be done to understand data volumes, types, and table structures to discover common data patterns and distributions. Parallel ingestion is also important to consider when discussing data ingestion, as distributed processing allows for big data scalability when you're ingesting data from multiple different sources and systems. By carrying out data ingestion from multiple nodes in a cluster running simultaneously, execution times can decrease significantly. In addition to an increase in performance of data ingestion, the ability to effectively manage your data sets also becomes more feasible. By defining and documenting relationships across data sets being ingested into the data lake, those that are already available, the information needed to transform and combine this data is accessible. Automated data cataloging can assist with data management as well by serving as an inventory of all data sets within the data lake as well as provide further details on the contents of data available to evaluate its potential usage in reporting and analytics. Additionally, considerations surrounding data quality checks should also be used through different means such as validating alignment to reference data and checking for PII to ensure that that type of secure information is being handled properly. Through improvements across data ingestion and data management, solution responsiveness improves as well. To advance this even further, exploring areas where there is potential to streamline data visualizations for various business groups creates near real-time reporting results. Developing standardized data pipelines for users to quickly query data sets available in the data lake only further your solution's ability to respond. While keeping these three key benefits of data lake automation in mind, I'll now hand it over to Laura, who will highlight where certain aspects have been implemented in a demo of our self-service data ingestion tool. Thanks, Sarah. Um, so before I get into the actual demo, I'd like to give you an overview of an overall self-service architecture that we're trying to accomplish in our means behind actually developing such a tool. So in our experience in industry, we have found a variety of clients with a similar sort of ask regarding self-service data ingestion. Rather than solely having IT manage data entering a data lake, for example, companies are looking to automate this process and create the ability for their users to do this on their own. Some have taken it even a step further and consider the ability to auto-generate reporting models for these same users to almost 
use immediately. In this architecture diagram here, uh, we have laid out what this might look like from a very basic overview perspective. Um, this highlights the data ingestion tool into the raw process and output layers within the data lake, uh, which ultimately feeds a reporting tool that can be autonomized. However, in considering this architecture, it's important to ensure that there's still governance while allowing for self-service. So by creating a distinction in your data lake between IT managed raw process and output layers and those specific to the self-service tool itself, effective data governance is much more attainable. This distinction between the data lake layers will allow IT to continue to manage all other aspects of the data lake without interference from self-service tools and monitoring self-service layers separately. So finally, um, here we have the actual architecture of the prototype that we've built surrounding a self-service data lake ingestion tool. This self-service tool automates the ingestion of data by a business user into a data lake and dynamically generates a Power BI data model for reporting and analysis by the same user. During the self-service process of data ingestion, this tool enables a user to analyze the newly uploaded file along with the existing data assets that already exist in the data lake. So to preface this before I go into the details, um, the programs and applications that we chose to use um, to create this end-to-end -end tool, we chose just based on what was best for our scenario, uh, but this could also be changed and reevaluated depending on, a, on the specific use case. So to begin, users will interact with Power Apps to upload a file into the data lake. Power Apps can then read and write back to a data catalog that is being stored in SQL database. Power Apps then pushes that file into the raw layer in the data lake, which database, Databricks reads, transforms, and then pushes into the other layers. And then finally, the Databricks is triggered again to run a code that automatically creates a Power BI model. Upon creation of the model, Power Automate is utilized to send an email notification to the user in which uploaded the file to begin with. So now that I've walked you through the architecture for this data ingestion solution and basically how the data flows in and out of the data lake, I'd like to show you all what the front end self-service piece of the tool in Power Apps looks like to the end user. So switching over to Power Apps, this is what the start of the process looks like. Here we have the first screen visible to the user, which describes the intentions um, of this data ingestion tool, and then also instructs the users to select if they would like to ingest data or create a Power BI model. For the purpose of this demo, I'm going to be showing you how to do both. So having selected both of these options, I'll select both of these here, and then moving on to the next screen. On this screen, I'll be uploading a file uh, to upload to the data lake. Um, at the top of the page, some of the details and conditions surrounding um, that upload process is called out. So here under the select file, I will click upload file. And for the purpose of this demo, I'll be using a set of sales data from Canada, and I will be uploading that here. Um, so I'll select this Canada file, and then I will click add to selected, and you'll see that file appear under the selected files on the right hand side. So this list contains all the files that I'm going to be uploading and ingesting into the data lake. Um, I could also change the name of the data set if I wanted to, um, to change the name of the file that's actually being uploaded to the data lake. So now that I'm all set with the file um, and I've uploaded it, I'm gonna click next here at the bottom. So now on this screen, I'll be selecting additional files um, that I would like to include in my Power BI data model. So the first screen incorporated showing how you upload the file to the data lake, but now I can actually create, really, um, select other files that I want to include in the model. So on this left-hand side, this is pulling from the SQL DB, um, the data catalog in the SQL DB and all the files that are available in, within that data catalog. So here we see the file that I just uploaded. Um, in the middle screen here, you see some details of the file content itself. So here we have the data set name, column name, so the columns that are available within that data set, and then the data type that corresponds to the column name. So for the purpose of this, I will be wanting to analyze Canada so I can select it here. I will add it to my selected data sets on the right hand side. I'm also going to be selecting the gym geography file. So that also, again, the middle part changes and identifies what columns are available in that data set. I'm going to use that one. And then I'm also going to use dim product. And again, showing the column names that are available in that data set. So I'll add all of those to the right-hand side, and they, as you see, will show up here on the right-hand side. So once those are added, I'm going to continue on. This next step will be to define the relationships between the tables that I just selected. So here we have the default to automatically assess and select table relationships, but to do so manually, we can just switch this toggle up above um, from manual to from autom automatic to manual. 
And then now I'm going to be creating the relationships between the data sets that I just selected. So I uploaded my Canada sales file and I want to create a relationship between that and my gym geography file. So again, we're same, same sort of content here in terms of the contents of the file on both sides. I am going to be creating a relationship on Canada zip and the geography zip file. And I'm going to be creating a many to one relationship. So once I've selected that relationship, I'll add that relationship below. I also want to create a relationship between my Canada sales file and my DIM products table. So I'm going to select my DIM products. I can see here scrolling down that they have a call, common column name, product ID. I will select both of those. Again, I would like a many to one relationship. I will add the relationship and then I see the relationship that I have defined down below. So moving on, the next part, now that I've entered all of the necessary information to upload the file to the data lake and automatically create a Power BI model based on the relationships that I just defined, um, I'm going to click, click Submit. So here below, if I want to, again, save any of these settings that I just ran as well, so the types of table relationships that I joined, if I want to ever go back to it in the future, I can name this here, Model Test, and I can save that as well, and that will also save the model that I just produced. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what's now going on in the back end upon hitting that submit button. Um, so upon hitting that, Power Apps has triggered Databricks to create a Power BI data set based on the specifications that I just made in the app. Um, once that data set has been created by the user, in this case myself, um, I would be notified via email that the data set has been created and the link to that data set will also be included as well so I can access that um, almost immediately. So again, taking a final look at this architecture, you can see how self-service in combination with automation can bring about the improvements that we mentioned, including data ingestion, data management, and solution responsiveness. Um, it allows for more user interactivity in the day-to-day -day of your backend data structures, in addition to also creating faster reporting output that can then drive company insights and decision making. So what's next? What can you do to get started thinking about how you can incorporate these self-service and automation into your own data lakes? So it's important to think about how this might fit into your own organization as it exists currently. Beyond what we discussed today, what does self-service mean to you and what are you hoping to accomplish with that? What types of self-service culture would you want to create and who should have access to the platform? For those of you who already established a self-service platform, where where are there opportunities for you to improve this and evolve? These are important questions to evaluate in order to develop an architecture that would actually work well and function well in your organization. So as I mentioned earlier, the types of tools and structure that you choose to implement should be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. So in order to do so, um, you'd like to, you'd want to speak to your colleagues to get a better sense of their, as well as your company's needs and identify challenges that might stand in the way of achieving that as well. So thinking about if there's any support that you might require in strategizing and developing such an architecture. So the tool that we walked you through today is one of our offerings in assisting our clients facing similar challenges and looking for potential accessible solutions. If you are interested in further exploring the capabilities and details of the tools that we shared with you today, or even beyond that, where self-service capabilities can be addressed in your company's data lake structure, please feel free to reach out to us um, based on the contact details at the end of this webcast. So again, thank you all for attending today's webcast. We do have some more listed on the screen, additional webcasts, as well as additional trainings that we have in partnership with Microsoft. So a lot of events coming up here on the screen. You can also access these on our website and register on our website as well. So the same place where you would have registered from today's webcast. So thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Um, if you do have any questions, do reach out to us. Our, deep, our contact details are on the screen. Um, thank you for joining us today and hope you have a great day.